Uh, joining me right now is former Georgia Congressman Doug Collins. And, uh, Congressman, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thank you so much for being back with me this morning. Let's Good talk about the Georgia law first, because right. this story is just outrageous. First, you have all of the activists and mobs uh, and the bullies on social media attacking people they don't agree with. Then you have these people attacking companies to make sure to speak out about Georgia's voting laws, and they didn't even read them. So they've actually come out with their bullying based on what looks like a lie. Talk to us about the Georgia voting law. What is it? Well, it's very simple, Marie, and it's good to see you again as well. The Georgia voting law did several things. Number one, it actually expanded voting hours here in the state of Georgia. It actually now codified into law drop boxes, which last year were illegal under Georgia law. It actually made our, our absentee ballots more secure in the sense that now you have to have the same standard for voting in person, an ID, a, a photo ID or a numbered ID for your actual absentee ballot that you would actually put onto your uh, application and your ballot as well. It, it tightened up really what uh, we were looking at here in Georgia and making our, our voting safe and secure and very easy. We now have um, two days on Saturday, optional Sundays. We're expanding voting here in Georgia, but yet that's not the message that Stacey Abrams and Raphael Warnock and Ossoff and many of the other Democrat leaders, and including our president, uh, did not want people to hear. Because now what is really interesting is, is this the expanded voting law, the, the liberal media is talking about Kentucky, which just added a couple of minor details but still has no ex that we still have no excuse voting on absentee here in Georgia. Kentucky does not, but yet the liberal media thinks that they've done something great. This shows you the bias. But what is really depressing is when you have the president of the United States tells the Georgia legislature in Georgia and the people of Georgia that we're too dumb basically to understand our own election laws to smarten up. That's a problem when you have the president of the United States who doesn't understand bills well enough to comment on something in Georgia that actually hurts people. Well, I mean, you're making a, a very important point. President Biden came out on multiple occasions and said that the Georgia law was Jim Crow on steroids and that it was racist. Uh, should he come out and apologize for that? I mean, look at the numbers. Major League Baseball pulls out of Atlanta. Colorado is 86.9 percent white, 4.6 percent black. Georgia is 60.2 percent white, 32.6 percent black. Denver, 76 percent white, 9 percent black. Atlanta, 40 percent white, 51 percent black. And, and they're saying they're moving it because of racial issues. How is it possible that he comes out and says this and nobody even, you know, remarks other than you and, and Fox? I mean, did, did these people, these titans of industry, not read the law? Uh, no, frankly, they didn't. And what's, what's the problem is, Maria, you're applying logic. They're not applying logic. They're applying emotional feelings to get a desired result. And some of this points back, actually, to the United States Congress, where they're trying to pass a disastrous piece of legislation called H.R. 1 or S.R. 1, which is a federal takeover of elections. They're trying to use the race card to break a filibuster in Congress. Don't let them fool you thinking it's all about Georgia. It's about breaking a filibuster in D.C. But let me make one comment. They've talked about right now the Georgia law being discriminatory or hurtful to minorities or other populations. We've had voter ID in Georgia for over 12, 13 years now, and our minority populations have increased their voting percentage every year. They're growing, and, and minority participation is way up. There's only, they said that this bill hurts uh, those populations. I'll challenge anybody who's read the bill to show me where it's discriminatory, show me where it actually hurts. Instead of telling me it has the potential to, show me where it hurts. But I will show you Joe Biden, Stacey Abrams, and Wafia Warnock and others who actually have hurt the people of Georgia because through their words, through their lies, through their deception, they have cost Georgia over $180 million in this process. And that goes to the hardworking folks in Georgia who are looking to, to just feed their families. They've taken uh, food out of families' mouths in Georgia. That's when they need to circle back and yeah. have their apology. And Joe Biden ought to lead it. And, and Stacey Abrams as well. Uh, yesterday, uh, Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger 
uh, basically said that Stacey Abrams probably poll tested the word Jim Crow, part of her hustle for making money. Uh, Major League Baseball fell for it, takes the All-Star game out of Georgia. Now Dan Henninger in the Wall Street Journal in a new op-ed is saying now is the time to boycott baseball. Doug, okay? He says now is the time to boycott corporations that have jumped on this cancel culture bandwagon. I mean, Doug, this has got to stop, this cancel culture. Uh, the, these extremists want to attack anybody that they don't agree with. I, I agree with you, Maria. And, and the problem is, though, it's got to start with people like me and you being willing to say this is not a racist law. Quit calling me a racist. Quit calling this discrimination when actually you're just not reading the bill. Too many times conservatives have sat back and we've let people say things about us, about bills and, and processes, and we don't do it. We got to step up. And then the company's got to understand that we're customers, too. Real quick, why did Georgia feel the need to come up with a new law for voting? Well, it, what it is is actually when you look at our, our previous elections, you look at the, the determination, especially among absentee ballots and things that we had. What this simply did is, like all states do, is let's assure voters in the state that if a legal vote counts and a, a non-legal vote will not count. It's about taking care and making sure every uh, legal vote counts. And all they did was actually, again, Maria, think about this. They expanded voting hours. They codified uh, drop boxes. They did not do away with uh, no excuse absentee voting. I you can get that. an absentee ballot 78 days away. This was simply about right. protecting our vote, nothing else. Yeah, and, and by the way, I want to vote with an ID. There's nothing wrong with that. That's what we should no. be doing, using an ID. Doug Collins, great to see you this morning. Thank you, sir.